Hey, Sean. Hello. Hi there, Keen. I'm sorry about hey. that. <laughs> <laughs> How are you doing? Fine, thank you. Nice to see you. Let me just adjust this. Yeah, there we go. Thanks, man. I was actually getting confused. Um, where about are you? I'm in England. England, right, right, yeah. right, right. Now I was getting confused. First, I thought when you said 6 30, then I was like thinking, okay, is it uh, my time? Is it your time? You know, that's why I said 7 30. But anyway, here we are. Yeah. International timing. So How's it going, man? How was your day? I'm very, very busy today at the end of the week. So loads of emails yeah. have been flying my way. But yeah, yeah. Fine. Okay, man, we'll, we'll make it as quick as possible. You know, it's all on you and how much you want to share. So, I mean, I'm going to like just jump straight into it. You know, you've been in the business. Um, I mean, besides being in the music business as a musician, you're quite a well-established international writer as well. Um, and I was actually checking out, like, uh, you know, your Twitter posts and so on and what you repost and what you, um, like, actually advocate about. Let's use that word, advocate about. So it's sort of like, and I may be wrong with this, you know, you can... Um, Tell me yes or no. It's sort of like you you use your artistic work to actually promote something that's much more bigger uh, when it comes to society and social justice and so on. Mm, no, I think that's that's an interesting analysis. Yeah, um, I am first and foremost about the artwork, uh, the things that I I create, um, like the picture behind me, um, and I like though to talk about cultural and political issues too. It's all very important right now, and that's the topic of my last book. So I attempt to to tie those things together, and I find X a particularly helpful platform to do it on because of free speech. So um, you know, you're able to express. Yeah. Oh no, 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 definitely. So, how does it? Do you have any like? Um, what's the word that I can use for this? Do you have any like critics out there that criticize what exactly you do? And how it fits into your music does it affect your career? How do you keep a balance like between the two? You know, because uh, there's some artists out there who are like, you know, they could they advocate in the same message as you with regards to free speech and uh, so on, but they sort of get like shut down or what they would like to call it in 2024. I'm going to cancel you, you know. Mm -hmm. So, have you had any like situations like that? Uh, well, you have the occasional spat online. Uh, people criticize, but I see um, social media um, as a test of patience and how to handle people who are deliberately antagonizing and rhetoric because I don't do anything insulting online. I don't, I'm not blithe. I'm not uh, intentionally rude. I just don't like rhetoric in general, blah, blah, blah. You know, I like to talk about a point. And if the person engages with the point, it's always easy to be polite to me. And when you can't agree, you go, well, we're not going to agree, and you walk off. And uh, I don't yeah, find yeah. that difficult. Some people find it difficult. Um, that's fine. I'm into free speech, as in other people can disagree with me and be whatever they want, you know? It can get frustrating, yeah. though. Of course it can. No, 100%, 100%. But look, man, um, I'm super proud. Super proud of what you do. You know, not many artists out there, you know, any form of artist actually just comes out, you know, and speaks what's on their mind um, and is actually doing something, you know, that supports, you know, or gives justice back to people who actually deserve it. So big ups on that point. Big ups on that. So you started your career quite way back. Okay, before we continue, so how much time do you actually have? Um, it's fine. I, I, I I'm, I'm into it now, and I, I, the other things I've got to do, I can do afterwards. Right, that's life. It's fine. Okay, cool. Now we can try to push it. You know, for 30, 45 minutes. You know, completely up to you. So mm. I mean, um, yeah, just run us through. Like, you know, how did it start for you? Now we're just like touching on, you know, like on the music itself. Like how did it all start for you? I know that you've been releasing albums since like 2005 and so on. Um, like when did it start for you? Um, well, when I was about 14, really, as um, I think that age is very important to lots of people. There's a, there's a, there's, there's a spurt of growth of um, a kind of curiosity about the world. Lots of people I've spoken to. And I mean, that's when it kicks off. And then since then, I've discovered I am able to to work in lots of different fields. I, and and what I, the, the challenge is to do them all with equal intensity as each other so people don't just think you're the one thing because I like to do lots of different things. So lots of years in the music and trying to get somewhere with that and how then the music industry changed at the beginning of the century. And I got an art degree at the same time. So I was like, well, I got the art as well. Um, 
the art I particularly still do now, and it gets better and better. The music, I've got loads of ideas done, recorded out there, doing their thing in Spotify world. So we do some promotion of that, but loads of it's, and it's very much a young girl expression. And the older you get, not that I'm ancient or anything, but the older you get, the, the desire to express it differently comes more. And so I'm into writing now and art and things like that because they're more sedate. That you don't have to tour and you don't have to do all that kind of associated things. So, But they're all the same language. And so yeah, yeah, yeah. I was 14, went through lots of different phases, and now I've got nine books out and I'm doing art all over the wow. place. <laughs> wow. Wow. So – on the music itself, so Spotify entered the scene in 2006, and you were releasing music before that. So you've seen both worlds. You've seen, like, you know, the old school of, like, okay, CD, and now you've seen also the digital era. When you were releasing music, did you ever do it on CD and vinyl? Um, the first sort of uh, single that I um, was on um, was released by an indie company called Colchester Recordings in 23, uh, 2003, and that was um, as a CD. And so, but I don't know how they did it. I don't. They just banged it out, and it's like, oh, great! I want a CD. That's nice. That's a one off the bucket list. And then they were all, the industry was already struggling under under Napster. Um, you know, change. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And yeah. so. I have never seen the 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 '90s Elgin Don Oasis career career sort of making stuff of rock, and I'm happy about that because I don't have those expectations. They're all heartbroken older people going, "Where's all that gone?" I've never known any of that. I just make and make, and I respond to the tech when it comes. Not that I necessarily use it, but I know what a platform is. And um, yeah, yeah. what what I find interesting is, is to try to get whatever's happening algorithmically online into the real world i love that process and so either that's a book into your hands because you've ordered on amazon or a song that you're hearing live or that you're listening to in your car that's done i think that's a, it's a lovely process so to bring things out of the online world into the real world um, i'm an artist no in no that. no yeah 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 definitely and then okay so you kick start your music career first and then you go into writing and out till date you've got nine books have you ever like sort of like I know, like, like, there's a lot of ideas that come up where guys actually like, okay, we're gonna release a book and we're gonna complement it, you know, with our music as well, some way, some form, you know, to actually like uh, promote it. So, like, which are you, which, do you like focus your like your attention like on it evenly, or one overtakes the other? It's it's really important to try and do it as evenly as possible to avoid it looking sort of like some sort of hobby. Um, because you know people aren't as interested in that when it's just a hobby. So, I, and uh, once I've got something out, I do my best to promote the arse out of it for six six months to a year and do that heavily. That will mean constructing stories around it, doing 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 a live talk, doing a podcast, and and connecting things up to whatever that is at that time. Um, if that happens to go from album to book to exhibition. So be it, you know, depending on how I feel yeah, yeah. and what, what I want to do next. Um, and if that all gets a bit bit sort of mixed up, then that's fine. And then you look back over it all and you see what you've done. But there's no point in trying to plan it at the time because you're trying to respond to to living things, you know, in, in your own creativity. Um, yeah. Did that answer you? I'm sort not of sure. like you, you all complement each other, you know, they're like compliments. The next. Like, oh, they, there's a lot of people like are just like all over the place. So your one like, actually just like compliments, you know, <laughs> you have the guys all over the place. I, I definitely try to connect things up, but I accidentally connect them up. Um, I find that I've got a picture that's called a delicate balance of reason. I forgot that I'd named it that five years ago. And now I've got a book called that done last year. And I think there's a poem called that somewhere too. So it's like, but there's a lot of material now. There's over 500 poems and, and a lot of art. So um, I, I can't, I don't keep up with it like a, like a like a librarian, you know. I don't, I'm just aware of what's there, and these ideas come into my head, and when they stay around, you know, they should be used at some point because they probably have a meaning to somebody else as well. But yeah, I don't like just produce for myself, you know. It's also for the audience. Yeah. It's a download. So all your work that complements each other, what's the like most important and most critical message that you're actually pushing out? You know, like what's your 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 signature when it comes to it all? Wow, that's a hell of a question, Kino. Um, good one. I, I think 
the last two books I've done, uh, 2023 was Compelling Speech, The Stammering Enigma. Stammering is a thing I know about and care about. I'm a stammerer. It comes and goes, you know, you, you might not notice. And and then this year's it's a delicate balance of reason about the culture wars, as we've chatted. So those things appear to be very uh, interconnected with me. I'm very into the free speech thing, as we see that being closed down in various ways in my country. I don't know about yours. And, and in America, there's all kinds of problems with this. And um, I I come from a left-wing past in the last century. Uh, now I'm very much in the centre <laughs> because the left has become so very strange. And I'm not saying I'm not left-wing. I'm not having a go at any of your other viewers. It's just it's a very strange place now. And um, I prefer a naturalistic place, which means expressing yourself properly. So if I'm not speaking openly like this, I'm stammering and things are going wrong and it's tension and all that. And I like open expression. So I suppose my the message is about open expression and, and enjoying sort of th uh, through that and going past past identity politics. That would be my my very special point. I'm not a fan of identity yeah, politics. Yeah. I don't care about where you're from, what colour you are, what your sex is and everything else. I care yeah, about yeah, yeah. And I'm a bit like that. No, 100%. I mean, a bit of history. Like when I first started my podcast, it was in 2021. And I also touched on various topics, you know, and politics was like, you know, one of them, not just like, you know, uh, in South Africa, but, you know, globally as well, as you've mentioned, the states and all the chaos has unfolded, you know, over, you know, give or take last 10 years. But I guess it's been unfolding for a long time before that. And then, you know, then I finally made the decision just to keep down to the music industry. But I am quite interested, you know, like in politics, like just with you, you know, like don't fall under any left or right, you know, there's no red or blue, there's no specific party that I support in South Africa alone. Um, you know, my views on it, like, I'm passionate about the topic, but I also try to be pragmatic as well. As in that, if I believe in free speech, yes, we all need to express ourselves. And we need to stand up for things that we really feel passionate about and that we write about. But I've come to also believe that you can't really save everyone out there or get them to think the way you do. There's only so much that you can really do. You know, you can go out there and you can release the music, you can publish the books, you can do the medium articles, you can keep up with the daily, weekly, bi-weekly blogs, you know, and get out to people. But it's like, there's a silent majority, but they're just not actually like, you know, fast enough and like really believing in themselves enough to know that, look, I came into this world and I'm free. You know, I can do what I want with my life and I don't have to be dictated to on which way I actually need to go, whether that dictatorship is coming from family or friends or who's the most popular group or most popular political party out there. You know, that I can be wherever, like, I want to be and it's, like, people are just still stuck. So then I just, like, became pragmatic, like, look, if I'm really going to make it in this world doing what I do and doing it on my terms, I need to step aside from politics and not bring politics, you know, into my podcast or my life or my brother, even though I love to talk about the topic. That's why we, we shouldn't stop talking about it, you and I, yeah. It's a good topic to talk about. So do you ever get those sort of frustrations where like, look, you know, you're getting out there, you're trying to get a specific message through the people and boom, it's like a roadblock, you know, you're just like, wall <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know I'm, I'm talking to you but you're not hearing to what i'm saying and then a couple mm -hmm. of months down the line it's the blame game you know now we want to blame the politicians we want to blame the government but us as a society we never like take action or take accountability for our lives well there we go i mean it's um the the problem the problem with this is that tech and politics have come into the personal sphere in a way that wasn't there before the internet and so people of my age who remember before and are living through it now uh, are much more critical of it and more sort of uh, uh -huh, I know what you're up to than the young generation where it's completely natural for them to get boxed into a corner and then fight their way out but for me I'd prefer to just look, look at everything and look at the subject and what you're saying about that what you're saying about that does that stand up does that make sense and um, do it in an academic way you know so um, you can kind of, and then people think you're being a smart ass because you're doing that. You're not being smart ass. You're just looking at something objectively, you know. And that's the problem with the subjectivity of culture we've got now. It's about how everyone feels about what's going on. 
Um, and in the old days, that didn't matter how you felt about it. It's just what it is is what matters. So we can say that if you feel like you're a woman, then you're a woman. And then we have a whole new era of being. And we're all kind of trying to, for, just for example, woman, you know, there's many other things we can go with identity, right? And then before you know it, all of the terms that we used to have are burned. There's no agreement. There's no common ground. If that person insists on um, carrying on their identity being more important than their actual person, personhood, then it's difficult to have a conversation. That's what I find. And that's where the generational part's coming in. And so all, all, all of the youngers are going to look at this and go, yeah, they won't say boomer, I'm not that old, but they'll say, yeah, person over 40, <laughs> um, just in their minds, you know. And I'm not being, I, I know not everyone is like this of any age. Loads of old people are super wacky and loads of young people are much more traditional than they're allowed to let on. Um, they sort of kind of tell you quietly, you know, oh, I know what you mean. And <laughs> all you can do is go out there and keep being honest and be kind, but not in a in a sympathy, um, um, be kind or else way, which is what they do these days. You know, that, that word's lost its um, perhaps yeah, lost yeah. Its meaning, kindness. <laughs> yeah, I guess, you know, on the other side, you know, even though like I have that sort of view on society, it's harder to get them to really understand. But I mean, you were just very diverse and, you know, what makes sense. But the world is becoming more, you know, there's more consciousness out there now never before hmm. um i just you know from where i'm sitting i'm just seeing people fighting and i'm thinking like you know what you're fighting over you know <laughs> like what's really the issue hmm. you know those sort are of things so i mean you're in a very interesting uh position right now you know in the world you know like people will maybe not know that yet but from where i'm sitting you know it's a very interesting position with regards to like you know your people and your followers and <laughs> so have you ever thought for yourself like to you okay you started off as an artist and so on you've done your books but to actually like get into politics itself as a politician oh god no christ no <laughs> that's a place where you have to lie and you know that that's the problem yeah i'm an artist because yeah why know, do we have to lie like you know <laughs> they can't tell the if they actually if they said what was going on they wouldn't get elected so and they yeah. have to do all these other things to smile and make people happy no it's not not my game i'm not interested um but but it's and i'm also not we're not for fluent enough uh, if people picked up on the stammer they'd be like oh you see you see he doesn't know what he's talking about he's like whatever no i don't know what i'm talking about i'm yeah not actually bothered by power power is very important because it controls loads of different things I, I i understand power dynamics and they're 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 everywhere but they're not all they're not everything um sp spiritual life has nothing to do with power being in love uh, the love you have for your, for your children or your dog has nothing to do with power there's lots of things that aren't about power and i actually and having a paint pot in my hand and doing a painting has nothing to do with power. So it's like those things are actually much more important to me, but the power dynamics exist everywhere else. And online, they've jumped in to what used to be a very hokey kind of business place of like kind of nerds chatting, you know, now it's just become everybody. And when things like, just to give you a, like the Democrat party in America controlling young white liberal women under 30 so they're all voting for them and everybody else is voting for trump and the republicans that kind of social divide is unsustainable and that's a power dynamic that's got to be commented on somewhere or other you know just just for example and that's um that, that's the world of politics by accident culture and politics have gone like this and people don't like to talk about it because they don't really quite and that's a good thing about being my age is that you know where you are what's going on because you've seen it turn into this like people love to get told what to do, you know. They don't want to do what they feel like doing. You know, politics is all about divide and conquer. Is what mm. it is. But I just also feel that, you know, and it's the first time like, I actually spoke about you know, this topic on uh, the podcast with the guests. Like I feel it's a, this is how the world works and how the world really works. You know, okay, one thing I did say to a guest a few weeks ago was like, there's the news and then there's the real news, you know. This is how they tell you the financial system works, but this is how it really works. Mm. So it's navigating people into those right channels. And I mean, living in this era of information, all the information is online. You know, 
they, they, they will tell you, look, this is exactly what we're doing. This is the people's attention is focused there. You know, it's mm -hmm. distractions. Day by day, we're just being distracted. So, yeah. When it comes to sport, I mean, even with music, I mean, there's controversy with music also and artists who, you know, follow uh, political orders, you know, built by design. You know, there's a specific agenda because of artists, you know, say I have, I'm going to just put a bald figure out there. Like, say I have 2 million fans worldwide. Cool. You know, I can tell them to take one shoe off and walk on one leg. They're all going to do it. That's mm -hmm. political power. That's the power mm -hmm. of, you know, art. So if I endorse a certain candidate who's running for president and I got 2 million followers, I know on the back end, look, there's a lot of benefits for my career on this. That's 2 million votes for you. That's just how the world is. It's how it's built. And unfortunately, because you're in love with that artist, whoever that artist may be, you know, can be Sean, can be Kino, can be whoever. No, because Kino is moving with this specific political party. So am I. Mm -hmm. It's a mess. Mm -hmm. I think what I'm trying to get to you, <laughs> it's a mess. You know, it's it a is. Mess. So is... And it always has been. It always has been. Yeah. So it's a different kind of mess now because there's 8 billion voices with an amplifier. As you say, though, when you have the 2 million followers, it's a bigger amplifier. So that's when they start to take notice and it becomes a power tool. And the legacy media are terrified of alternative and social media. And I don't think that's a bad thing. I think that's a very good thing um, because... The more more voices are, are, are available, the better. Of course, insight to violence, never good. We've had a lot of that in, in Britain, um, that story over the last month or so. It's been gnarly. Some people sort of have gone to prison for it. Donald Trump over, you know, for the last couple of years, all that controversy just to have him put away because he's popular, you know, and this happening in every country in the world. And the Arab Spring, kind of closer, you know, between you and me there in, in North Africa, that was major 13 years ago and it made um good progress if you think that progress is good <laughs> if you don't it was disastrous progress you know and it's so this the subjectivity it, it, it is is that is someone's going to get hurt and it depends which side you're on and identity politics <laughs> sort of bringing it back there has been exploited madly to indeed keep us apart uh, and also that to then build up those power bases um, whichever they are, and you know, I will always attempt to get through that to the other side of that. Um, yeah. which stops me being if anyone ever accuses me of being right wing, it can, can um, because of the people I follow are very honest, and often honesty and the right wing can go together. So, there's something about it that I like, but I'm not that because I'm not nationalistic and, and I'm not fierce, I, I'm just uh, I like reality, and you can't say reality is right wing, that's not. <laughs> that's what they say. That's what they yeah. say. I guess, look, everyone is entitled to, you know, their opinion. And if you can accuse Sean of being right wing or Kino of being left wing, whatever, you know, then it's cool. You know, don't like me. You know, mm -hmm. it's irrelevant. My life is still going to continue, whether you like me or not, or my beliefs or not, or whether you see the logic that I'm actually explaining to you. Um, like, for me personally, I followed Donald Trump since I was in school. Not sure if you remember the show The Apprentice. Sure. Anyway, yeah, yeah. So, like, that was the first time I ever came across Donald Trump was The Apprentice. And I'm like, sure, okay. you know, this dude knows what's going on, you know? And I, like, that was, like, I... Okay, it doesn't happen to everyone. Then I started balancing and I started looking at, you know, I started weighing it out, you know, listening to Donald Trump on The Apprentice and what my teachers at school are telling me. <laughs> and I'm like, nah, things don't make sense here. You know, then you start doing your own research and stuff. So if there was any one person I can say for myself, you know, now I'm, I'm open about it. It doesn't mean I'm political. I'm open about it. When people say, okay, why have I always like shared Donald Trump's posts or supported Donald Trump, you know, since 2016 when he went into politics. And I'm like, look, it has nothing to do with politics. It's just about the guy himself. When I was growing up and I was confused and I didn't know what to do with my life and what my teachers were telling me didn't make sense. I don't even think they thought it made sense. This is because they were told they needed to teach me that. 
there mm. was one guy, and that one guy was Donald Trump, and he was like, you know, so on and so on. I'm like, cool, you know, this is something now. This is now converting me now, becoming an entrepreneur at a young age, or trying things, you know, and thinking outside the box. Until date, you know, I still, you know, admire the guy, I still look up to the guy, but it's much more than just being a politician. I mean, there's millions of people out there that only started supporting him after he became a politician. I'm talking before that. And I'm open about it. I'm open about it on social media. I'm open about it here on, you know, the podcast. And that's just how I feel about it. I wouldn't be here on this podcast if I don't go back to the root of how this all started for me, actually. Or when according to what the system was telling me, you know, you and I wouldn't be having this conversation now. And that's how I see it. So if you don't like the opinion, it's cool. There's many other podcasts you can go out there and listen to. Uh, you know, there's thousands. You don't have to listen to Kino and what his guests are actually saying. And why my main podcast is to, I mean, okay, sorry, my main mandate of this podcast is yes, for guests to express themselves, what you do, and so on. But my platform that I have built and that I am still building and will continue to build is to inspire independent artists out there. And mm. artists just like yourself can inspire those independent artists who will listen to this podcast to do something worthwhile with their art because your career can change a person's lives. doesn't matter how many lives you're going to change, but mm. you're going to bring hope to someone's life because if you don't as an independent artist in your community, how poor it may be, they're going to start listening to that guy at the top. And as you said, politicians are there to lie to us. So, <laughs> um, you know, I want the listeners of this podcast, which I mean, look, is independent artists, to look at, you know, you now and what you do with your art and use that for good. You know, some of you, you have you on the same vibe with that. Yeah. No, that's a that's a really interesting point you put there. And, and I, um, I got to say, I agree. It's like... If uh, a person's attracted to Mr. Trump, for example, it um, might be nothing to do with the politics of what he speaks. It might be about the fact that you like individuals because he yeah, yeah, does yeah. individuality, you know. And that is why lots of young men love Andrew Tate. Um, that He's a big problem yeah. according yeah, to yeah. the media in this country. Because how dare they be loving him when we've, got, we've been teaching all this stuff, stuff at school that you're talking about. And they're like, because he's, you know... They resonate to him like I would have resonated to He-Man when I was 13. And that's that's how I try to understand because he's just a bloke with big muscles to me, you know. But what comes out of his mouth is not entirely terrible. What comes out is sometimes pretty dodgy, but it's also but also he's a, <laughs> he's, a he's a guy, he's an American Brit, he's doing his thing. They love him, the kids love him. So just try to understand why they love him. Don't demonize that. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Just, Accepting is better than rejecting at all times, and that includes Trump. And um, and the problem for the Democrats is that they have to what's been said recently, and I am intending to agree, is that they've become the nasty party in America, and they're doing all kinds of well dodgy things, and um, from Ukraine yeah, to yeah, yeah. God knows what the corruption, you know, and sort of Trump's out there. The Repo Republicans have have a reputation for greed, okay. But they don't have this kind of very strange turning of the system, stopping the free speech in order to shut everything up so that we get our person in. Um, I, I mean, I guess politics does do that. We do that in Britain, too. We've, we've been going through these horrible machinations this year about it. It's, it's actually a pretty bad time for that for us. And the more they do that, the more they're going to make people gravitate towards individualists. And that can be artists like we like or individualist politicians and that can become a demagogue which is a problem when it's a problem i don't actually know very many at the moment because the world a demagogue can't actually get through uh putin is post demagogue he's a proper sort of dictator of the old school doing his kind of he's doing putin things which are beyond my scope of comment you know but apart from him there is just all these sort of it's a very it's a very tricky area but individualism is where I am. And uh, I, I don't trust groups. I don't trust parties. Uh, that's why I could never be the politician that we mentioned. I just don't do those group things. And when you're in the arts in this country, if you want to get somewhere, like officially, you have to play the group game. So yeah. I'm happy not, not, not getting anywhere under that because there's no integrity to that to me. So unless they're watching right now, Arts Council, if you are, I can play the game, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it wouldn't work. You yeah, know, yeah. Well. 
I love what you just said there, you know, bringing up the word integrity. You know, it's like what they say in the music industry, don't sell your soul. Don't sell your soul. You know, we hear that all the time. And, you know, I guess like we both are just pushing the same message, you know, just said differently. Hmm. You know, don't give up your values and your principles and your integrity uh, for whatever you may be getting in return. And these days, you know, it's it's money, it's financial freedom. We're all chasing it, but it's how we're chasing it that makes the difference. Mm. You know, that's what I believe. So you can choose as, uh, you know, for the independent artists uh, listening, is that you can choose to take the easy road or you can choose to take the long road. But choosing the long road, in my honest opinion, is going to be more worthwhile, you know, in the end. It's going to be more decent and you know, it's definitely going to put bigger smiles, you know, on your face in the end. And you're not going to live this just for life, you know, in the mm-hmm. end. And you're going to enjoy the process of just being an artist and creating and innovating and using all that for a bigger cause. But if I take the short road, I mean, look what's happening to guys out there now who are taking, you know, the short road. As they say it, you know, when they say I'm selling my soul, that is actually what you are doing to the music business, you know. Mm-hmm. We're in the music business to the top labels or wherever it may be. And there's just going to be no happiness. And the next thing is like, go on, hmm. because yeah, it's going to be enjoyable for the moment until one day you actually do wake up and there's some form of consciousness happening. Then you're like, oh shit, yeah, you know, this really doesn't make sense to me, you know, because they've consumed your mind with drugs, alcohol, women, whatever. And then you're going to be like, okay, you know, I'm going to bounce, you know, I'm out of here. You know, this is not for me. And when you're walking out the door, you realize you own nothing. <laughs> you <know? laughs> own nothing. You know, yeah, that house you were staying in, that car you were driving, and you're nothing. You're on the street. You're sleeping. That's it. End of story. So that's know. right. And if the only thing that they've got is that one hit wonder um, from from 2022, and they're still doing that in 2042, it's okay. That there's a part of the music industry that relies on that, and that person will sing that song and be known for that song. That doesn't. That's just not for some kind of artist. It's not for some people. I've never had that song. I don't think I ever would. I wouldn't want it. I wouldn't want that kind of an albatross around the neck, you know, to to always have to sing that song. And that's what you're known for when you do loads and loads of other really weird, interesting things. I'd rather have loads of weird, interesting things and have a job that I do to support that in other ways than have one hit that defines me, which I not hate, but I feel that doesn't doesn't represent me, you know. And and also, as, as you were talking there, I had another thought about... When you sign to a label these days, that is intricate, intricately connected now to tech. So it's it's not EMI of, of the old universal sort of it's, – it's all now about tech. And with your PR agency and your management, if you don't say what they politically, socially think, like say they're net zero and they're all be kind and they're into the climate and they're into – identity politics stuff and if i t- sort of turn around to emi and say i'm not interested in any of that and i'm going to go out and attack that and say right we're dropping your contract you know i, yeah. I would never be able to live and there are loads of artists like that i get in, in my dm inbox all the time saying i love what you're doing sean i'm like well, i've got nothing to lose you know i'm not coming from some millions of, of sales you know got a few hundred thousand streams but it's not that you know so there's nothing to lose by telling the truth and that's i, I think that if there's anything we can tell your listeners, there's, there's definitely there's definitely that. There's never anything to lose. Yeah. I mean, you just you have just now unveiled how it really works, you know, or we have just unveiled, you know, how it really works. Because if you do, if you are still pursuing to, you know, gain uh, a record deal and not remain independent, that's exactly how it works. The moment you sign that contract, they are going to dictate how you live your life what you say on social media, what you do on social media, where you go, who you support, all is going to be dictated to you. And as you said, you know, if you don't, you know, okay, we're dropping the contract, but guess what? We own all of the masters and we own Mm. all of the songwriting. So you are leaving here with nothing. Yeah, that's exactly how it is. So you can go out in the world there and you can preach, but you know, you live with nothing. And then it's going to become so demotivating to get to sort of mindset or a level such as yourself. Because you're already coming from just bad, bad, bad. It's like on the way down and you're never going to find it. But I mean, if you go in the right way like you did, you know, as you said, got nothing to lose. Absolutely <laughs> nothing to lose. <laughs> you know? Nothing to lose. Like, nothing to be remembered. Well, right. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. Keep, really keep going because you enjoy the thing itself, right? As, as, as yeah. you're alluding to. And then eventually it'll bring its own 
the identity will pull itself through. You know, I I don't think I've ever been comfortable defining what I do. And I rely on other people to tell me what they like best about what I do. That's enough for me because I, I do a lot of different things. So if, if they like the song, great. And if they like the painting, on the whole, it's the paintings they seem to like the best. It suits me, you know, okay. We'll see where it goes. And in the meantime, yeah, I've got yeah, other yeah, things yeah. to, you know, do to pay the rent. <laughs> So, like, just to, like, you know, conclude on the topic of, like, politics, where do you see, like, you know, the world itself by 2030? 2030? Yeah, 2030. <laughs> Meaningful date. <laughs> Is it? Uh, why I say 2030, it's it's come up, you know, on certain channels, you know, the news that I actually do listen to. You know, it's uh, it's a key year, the key year for the year, I mean, for the whole, for the whole world, you know, globally. So what's your thoughts? You know, where do you see the world in 2030? At the risk of kind of giving in to the self-fulfilling prophecy and mentioning it. But now Mr. Klaus Schwab has said that he wants a, the re reset, the great reset to be completed yep. by 2030. And for us to be basically a worldwide um, 21st century version of communism is the best way of putting it. Eating bugs, living in 15 minute cities, um, being kind, owning nothing, living on social credit rather than uh, money, and um, possibly being of no sex. I don't know, of being a, being a hermaphrodite, but I think that's, that's, that's a bit of a way off, maybe. But all these things which about everyone being happy together, not having any divides between people, and just going, they're a human being, and that's enough for me. And what I've learned after 30 years of them trying to do that in this country, in Britain, is that this trying to make everyone the same is a bad idea. People, It's a good thing to celebrate people's differences. Uh, don't attack them for those differences. Enjoy it and enjoy your own difference from that. Then you can to celebrate the history of your country and the history of your race and all that and celebrate the other person's too. Um, the problem with all this is religion, and we'll, I don't know what Klaus Schwab has to say about that. He's he's quit now. He's resigned, so his plan might not work. All the countries of the world, the globalists, are trying to make that happen because they've got lots of money invested in it, and, and they're, they're going to try their bloody hardest, and they're going to try to stamp down internet media talking like we are. So whilst we can, uh, I'm not saying it's absolutely evil. I'm just saying it's what they do because I don't like to say good and evil about anything. I like to say doesn't matter how I feel about it. It's what they're doing. And he said in his book, that's what he's going to do. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's a political declaration. So yeah, like, yeah, yeah. What, what do you want to do? Yeah. Do you have your own integrity as sort of South Africa going forward, as they say, or Britain going forward? We did Brexit, which is quite weird, amazing. And the struggle in America, the world's still the world's flag-bearing country for freedom, is like always in this fascinating, are they, aren't they, um, with Donald now and Kamala. And um, Kamala is a DEI hire. And I'm afraid to tell you or your viewers, I don't like DEI. I think, you know, it's it's uh, people should get their jobs based on their merit. And if you got it based on your skin color or anything else, you're never going to be very happy about the job you're doing, especially when other people go, yeah, you only got it because, you know, no, it's not. It's because I'm the best at this job, you know. Yeah, so I'm yeah. Not a fan of DEI, I'm afraid, but for those reasons, not, not for any other. Yeah. Uh, you know what, I guess uh, every country has the same issues, you know, once again, just spelled out differently, you know, mm. said by a different person, everyone has like the same issues. Yeah, no, I sort of agree, you know, with how you view the world being like, uh, you know, by 2030, you know, you will, uh, you will owe nothing, you will be happy. We will have CBDCs, you know, currency will be digital. You will be granted so much for a specific period. If you do not use it, it will be taken away. It's a reality of how the whole financial system is actually working now. Um, the dollar will crash sooner or later. I do believe some things are planned, you know, planned way ahead of time. I, that's just, you know, my opinions, you know, that I'm just sharing, you know, out here on top of this conversation. And uh, the next couple of years is going to be quite interesting, you know, Silly. So people thought that 2020 and COVID and what's happening with politics was just a phase. For me, it was like the start of something huge. And the sooner you can get on top of things, you know, like what you do, what I do, um, whatever it may be in your personal capacity, you know, now is that time to actually get on it. 
you know, like if we could go back to Andrew Tate, what he preaches about, you know, as you said, you know, some things make sense, some things don't, just mm. like anyone who talks, you know, but there's a lot of things that make sense when it comes to the Tate brothers, uh, from my personal opinion, you know, and if you just like listen carefully and just like start looking, you know, for those Easter eggs, um, you can be like one of few in the world, new world to come, you know, that won't be too stuck in the system of how they actually want it. Who knows, you know, what could happen? Will the world become conscious enough to actually be the majority and overtake it all? But, you know, once again, you know, I can people can call me a conspiracist or conspiracy, you know, conspiracy theory, what I'm about to say. The day you come into this world now, uh, one word you mentioned throughout this conversation what was like emotional. You know, we're living in such an emotional world. You know, we don't know what is happening to newborn babies when they come into the world now, you know. What is mm. getting injected into you now when you come into this world? You know, we don't know what's getting injected into food these days, into the water, you know, anything that you can consume, you know, mm. you don't know. What is the source of control to make sure people always stand in line? It's it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And there's all the information in the world is out there and all the lies in the world too. And yeah. know, at the end of the day, one has to trust oneself. I know that that the podcast revolution has been an absolute um, joy. It's a real boon. It's really, really healthy. However many people are watching and listening, you know that you've done the right thing with conversations around the world. And it's why the legacy media are so terrified of it is precisely because of that. You know, And it's like when... Even if the 2030 plan does happen, and it's like um, it might not be forever, you know, um, with the USSR, that was only 50 years, that though it seems like it's sort of monolith of the 20th century and people that I've met who were alive from then saying, you don't know how lucky you were in the West because, you know, we all kind of glamorized it a bit, you know. And, and now if we do lead to something like that, we might lead to something like that. But because of the nation states as they are, um, they've actually been divided into ethnographic in the Victorian days, you know, for, for us. They're actually divided into people that are of like each other and want to be with each other. <laughs> um, exception of Israel and, and the Arab world, of course, that difficult place. And up to Northern Ireland, you know, I know that South Africa is a, co it's a colony uh, story and situation, so I won't comment on that. And, and the British Empire, yeah, but it's all historical now. And it's like, you know, we just share the same language. And these countries actually exist because the people don't, if they live together too much, they start to fight. So if they try and do this, what the risk with the left is always genetics and naturality. You are who you are. I am who I am. To fuck with those genes too much is absolutely ridiculous because you'll get some sort of a, there's no point. When, when the genes have it all encoded, it's all perfect. And we are so much genes that, that people ignore. You know, we're like, as far as I, I'm concerned, you know, we're like 90% gene driven, you know, and the 10% yeah. in, 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 in the environment and the learning comes in too. It's not entirely genes, but a massive amount. And that's ignored by the, the social theorists because they're all like, you know, it's all your own decision. All right. There's no free will and it's almost all completely genes. So if the resetters ignore that, it's at their own peril because it's just going to fall apart again because you cannot stop the individual human for very long. And if you, if you do, you can just kill them all. So there's that. But if, if you kill them all to down to 500 million, like they might want, inside those 500 million, however mixed race you get them and to be androids, they're still going to have a core of humanity that goes, no. Nope. <laughs> so it would just be a different being doing that in 20 years time, you know? That's yeah, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Very dystopian vision I've just given there, but yeah. Anyway. <laughs> I guess the one that's saying nope is going to be called a rebellion. Yeah. Yeah. You're a rebellion. <laughs> Kill the rebellions. <laughs> but yeah, the entire been, subject. You know what I was wondering? Sorry? No, go on. You can. Uh, yeah, yeah. Go on. No, I knew that I knew that our conversation today was going to unfold this way, you know, especially when I was viewing, you know, like your ex profile. I'm like, it's definitely going this direction. But, you know, it, it complements, you know, it complements. As I said, you know, this must give meaning to an artist's life now. You know, there's two ways you yeah. can go out there as an artist, especially if you're starting off. You choose which way you want to go. Which one you're going to be able to go to sleep with and is going to keep your conscious clean at night. 
because you can really make a difference. Sometimes as artists, you know, we look at the the macro of things, you know, want to be with the guys at the top. Okay, cool, fair enough. But it's a and this is now coming just from my personal experience and the guys that I consult who are coming from like the lower class and like the poorest communities that there is in South Africa, but they are extremely talented. And I was up to guys like you know me and us, you know, using this podcast and these channels to go out there and assist them. It's like, okay, instead of looking at the macro, look at the micro and look at what message you can do with your artistic work, whatever it may be, just to make a difference in your community of 100 people, you know? Mm. Mm-hmm. That could be huge. That could be huge in the long run, just looking at that and focus on that. Yeah. So take it from there. You know, yeah, you're not going to go out there. I'm not telling you to go out there and, you know, run for president now as an artist. But no, you can make that small difference and help people get to really understand and get themselves together. I mean, if you really look at it, that's what I tell the guys all the time. Think about what the, like the, going back to the politicians and their lies, you know, and they're still thinking that they're doing something to make a light difference. No, they are keeping you in those poor communities deliberately, you know, and that's the mm-hmm. message I'm getting out there. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. It's not poor because of any other reason because they just want you there, you know, mm-hmm. it's built by wow. design. So you need to like, have that wake up moment at Spark and stop going and standing in the flipping lines to vote, thinking, okay, they're going to do something extraordinary for that community is going to make it better. No, they're not. It's up to you. Take charge yeah. of it. You know, that's what's up. Do it yourself at the time that you're still able because you might not be able to for very long. Is exactly. That's not telling. Why you care? But let's just say you know you start doing it now in this key period. Say over the next three years, you know, we're going to see fireworks after November. Okay. I'm not talking about celebrating. You know, no, no, no. this is going to be people celebrating, but there's going to be a lot of global fireworks after November, this year, after the US election. Mm. So, you know, people out there, artists out there, just need to start like preparing themselves now, you know, start working on those key projects, whatever it may be, you know, start you now. That's just, you know, my take on it. That's just... But I mean, this has been like, you know, insane, like, yeah, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit different, isn't it? Both of us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All, all artists, <laughs> if they're up for any sort of advice, it's just like, you know, um, do it. Do whatever you think that you should be doing. If you like it, great. And if no one else does, doesn't matter. Just do another one. Get your collection up and just keep keep going on with it and seeing what you can do next. Don't always repeat yourself and just see what yeah. which little part you can push it onto, whatever that be. Do a new chord yeah. in a new song or a new color in the new painting, you know, and just go on like that. That's how I do it slowly. Yeah. I'm a slow kind of guy, though, but I'm happy doing that, you know. Eventually, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> we, we all got our methods. It's like, okay, billions of people in the world, my audience, and I'm just talking about now, okay, I'm going to use music as an example. So I release a track, but I'm expecting just because, like, I'm a fan of Rick Ross now, for example, or Taylor Swift, that I am going to now, those fans are going to become my fans. Whatever I have to say, you know, lyrically, um, there's an audience for that. Your audience is out there. You just need to find it. Mm-hmm. You know, stop worrying about, you know, Kino's audience or Sean's audience. My audience is out there. So it's just about me going out and finding my audience, you know, and using the data available, you know, for me instead of chasing other people's audience to actually, you know, just make it. Yes, absolutely. I like, couldn't agree more on that. You know, but I love what you're doing about, you know, doing it slow because there's nothing wrong with doing it slow, taking your time, you know, and just building what really means a lot to you. It's, so, a, it's a long game. It's a long game. And whatever happens this century, it, it all isn't necessarily bad. And uh, we're going to be, be on here for 80 years. So just, you know, I'm never going to retire. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, be, I'll be doing this until I drop. And who knows what that work will be by then, you know? Or if we're allowed to make it. I think that's what we're <laughs> getting towards. Mm. Well, too controversial, yeah, Kino and Sean. No more of that. <laughs> to sum that up, it's like just love what you're doing. You know, love what you're doing. Yeah. You know, yeah. that's what matters most. Exactly. Love and it doesn't even have to be about creativity. That can be washing dishes if you do them well in a restaurant that you love. You know, that can also be yeah, yeah. what you're doing. Whatever you're doing, doing the best hmm. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, like, with your art, like the one in the background, do you, like, uh, you sell it? Is it, like, in galleries? Um, I've sold a couple um, over the last year, but it, they're not officially for sale because um, you start to feel like a... Uh, 
yeah, a prostitute. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how to put it, but yeah, <laughs> <I don't... clears throat> if anyone came up to me and said, God, I love that. I'd like to buy it. I was like, well, we can talk about it. If you've got a million quid, you know, but I'm not out there um, flogging them now because I enjoy doing them too much. And um, I, I'm not that big either. So it's like I we'll see as the exhibitions go and as I make more and more of them and as I run out of space, what to do. I'm thinking about that now, getting another space because I've got quite a lot. So, but I've got a, a Saatchi art page. If your viewers want to go to Saatchi art, it's, um, it's an art platform and look, look at my name there, Sean BW, and uh, they can see my other work on there. That'd be nice if they're into it. Okay. Look, I'm, I only upload. So, you know, I do the recordings on the Friday and then I do the uploads on the Sunday. So between now and tomorrow, you can send me like all, you know, the links that you would love to have yeah. there for people to go check out your work. Wherever. Of course, you know, the usual is the like Spotify and so on music related, but anything further and above to that, please send it through and I will add that in the description. Also promote that, you know, people to go check it out. So like, I mean, I'm not, okay, uh, we said uh, 30 to 45 and, you know, we're going on an hour now. I guess like one more question. So with your art itself, have you... How familiar are you with like NFTs and the blockchain and converting your arts to NFTs? <laughs> uh, I'm aware of what it's about. Um, about two months ago, a person got in touch with me on X and said, uh, I love your art. I want to do this. I want to give you 10 grand for it in Bitcoin, whatever. I'm like, yeah. oh, it's very nice of you. Great. All right. Well, there's my account. Put it in there and we'll see. And uh, she's like, oh, no, no, no. You need to put in 500 pounds to do it. And I'm like, Fuck off! I'm not doing that. I, I'm not, <laughs> and I can see exactly what what they were trying to do. So basically, I'm skeptical of any offer tech related when it comes to art. You know, it's like it, especially when you have to invest yourself because you're getting involved in a Ponzi scheme by accident. Um, and they're, yeah, they're yeah, trying yeah, to yeah. be on the artist. Maybe management. you should also like yeah, because like I mean I've been into since 2021. You know, like I've been into NFTs and uh, the blockchain. You know, and keeping my own okay. I've done my <laughs> own and so on. But like maybe just try to like you know like if you want to you know like try to do yourself instead of taking offers, don't take the offers definitely. You know, <laughs> don't take the offers, but uh, see what ways on you know, you can do it. I mean, with the tools out there now, now you can actually just convert like the physical painting you've done and make it into a digital form. And then, you know, go into markets such as like OpenSea and, you know, just run and control it yourself. Don't do it with anyone else out there. It's interesting. I've got one on there because this person asked me to do that. So I did it and I could see those. And uh, so it was this one and another one. I turned them into an NFT, put it on there. And it's just like a little picture of your painting. And and I know that the person can own that thing. Uh and then it's based on hype about which person wants to own that thing out there. And that's just the art trade in a microcosm, really, isn't it? And great if anybody wants to go down that line, they can. I prefer the physical object, the thing that's behind me. But I'm an old bastard, so I'm like, uh, I'm very yeah, happy yeah. If, you, if you guys can get that economy going, because I know that it is a, it is an economy. It's just everything I've seen so far has been rip-off related. So I'm waiting for it to become more mainstream i suppose or ram down my throat <laughs> yeah yeah no well, look man i got so much respect and love you know for the old school artists i guess in the drawers and so on because i mean now we're also living in the of ai you know look what ai mm. can do now you know a single prompt that's it okay you got a it's million dollar art. piece <laughs> yeah it's not art. The, yeah, the yeah. in the human yeah. being so yeah yeah they can try as much yeah, as they yeah. want but but it's like people are going to spot it. Just, it's never going to take over. Yeah, yeah. It's true, you know, with music or with the drawing itself, you know, because there's no storyline behind it. You know, there was a discussion also had between, okay, uh, look what's happening with AI music now. Right? But taking over, it's coming with the boom. There's heavy investments. Each week, there's a company getting like this $100 million, $120 million, you know, crowdfunding that's going on there. Uh, but, you know, what it all comes down to is that AI music will never take away traditional music because there's no storyline behind AI music. There's no emotional uh, you know, effect. There's no emotions behind it. But what I tell artists now, and it's not taking anything away from, you know, that, oh, no, that Kino is involved now in what's happening with art and, you know, all the fake shit that's actually going on. Is they keep a balance. Keep it traditional, but have a year on what's going on. You yeah. know, just on you know, explore. 
just explore, you know, what's going on, where it's going. Yeah. You know, just so you're in the loop. You don't want to wake up one day and it's like, what happened? You know, mm-hmm. you know, what happened? Yeah. Because it is crazy. I mean, there's, and there's people, um, and I mean, it takes away the, probably like can take away like our souls with this, being traditional guys as well, you know, in the game. Like, I'm not a drawer, but I mean, with my music production, for example. I mean, there's guys in the game that are really making a living in the millions, you know, of stuff that they're not even passionate about or artistic about. That's the world we live in. That's the best way to make the millions is to not care. Too yeah, much. yeah. I actually lucky. checked there was an update yesterday about one guy in the States who got caught. He made about just over 10 million on fake. <laughs> actually, like this guy went all out, you know. He, he made the music with AI and then he also used AI bots to generate fake streams. So he like right. used it all, you know. He put it all on the table, then he finally got caught. But at the end of the day, is um, there's two sides to every story, okay? There's two sides, and I'm going to share something, you know, before we conclude, you know, our discussion with the artists out there, is that the mainstream labels, don't look at the mainstream labels or look at mainstream artists and think that they don't use AI or they don't use bots to actually boost their numbers because they do. And that's just how the game actually is. Okay, if you're a mainstream artist, you're allowed to have 10% fake streams on Spotify or Apple or wherever. You know, but if you're an independent artist and you actually get a million streams using the same methods as the mainstream guys, they're gonna lock you up, man. They're gonna <laughs> they're coming for you. They're gonna say, yo, you know, let's go. You know, we be taking you down, we're canceling you. Here's it, your account, boom, gone. Because they just don't want it that way. You know, I had there was one podcast I actually watched a few weeks ago where the guy was actually talking about like how Spotify the investors don't know how the game actually works. They just dare to put money on the table. So Spotify will actually boost streams with certain artists because it's agreements with those labels um, to actually go back to the shareholders and say, look, look at the numbers we're pulling in to get that extra, you know, million investor back in to the company. Yeah. It's just about, you know, knowing how this all works, you know. And- yeah. There's... If you look at the numbers on stuff, it's I know why the people do that because it's all about the optics and the numbers and everything. And it's so irrelevant. You know, I can all my, the songs that, that I will see on on YouTube, for example, of about thirty to forty thousand, there they tend to be that's the sweet spot, it seems. When they're about fifteen or twenty listens, you're like, Yeah, all right, whatever, that's someone's auntie. But when they're like thirty, forty thousand, it's like there. When they're three hundred million and stuff, you're like that's just been um, bought, but bought and spammed, and and like just doesn't like make farmed, sense. Farmed, you know, and, and and that's when it becomes not interesting. And, and that's very much like the big pop world when Elton John, sort of God bless him, becomes to that degree of <laughs> sales and exposure. It's like it's not interesting anymore because it's too big. You know, it's it's the sweet spot. Or what, what I like, you know, the media. Yeah, kind no, hundred percent. You know, oh, 100%, I mean. 100%. Yeah, I know what you just said there. But uh, yeah, Sean, I mean, this was really insightful. This was really insightful. This was, this was exactly how I predicted it would go, you know, like, you know, it's good to have the conversations, you know, and not get into the room with someone who will be like, okay, like, I mean, okay, there was a guest I also had um, a while back and her people told me like upfront, don't bring up politics. So I'm like, I'm cool, you know. I'm cool. It doesn't matter to me whether we bring it up, whether we don't bring it up. We just need to all come to realization that politics fits into all our lives, no matter what we're doing, even the music industry. And we shouldn't be ashamed to talk about it. Yeah. You know? Talk about everything. Talk about I'm the best <laughs> talk about everything. Not everyone is. Yeah. There. Everyone's as cool as us, you know? How can they possibly be? You know? Where would the world go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nah, but Sean, no thanks. Is there anything you would love to conclude with? Oh, I think we've covered almost absolutely everything. Just keep doing what you do and do it gradually. Change it a little bit each time, Kino's listeners. A little bit each time, you'll get there to the place that you are. You don't know what it is yet. Yeah. Yeah, we can only go in steps, you know. We can only right. go in steps, you know. It's the crawling, it's the walking, it's the running, it's the sprinting. And if anyone o- 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 kind of offers you this, uh, take a long look at it and go, <laughs> no thanks, no, you're all right. Not for me. <laughs> or at least use your, like, use what, you know, God gave you, like, just think a bit, you know, think mm-hmm. a bit before you, like, consider just taking up the offer, 
Um, but look, I mean, it is it's, it's become so bad, like financially bad out there for a lot of people these days that they they feel like look, there is no other option, you know. Um, I might as well just take it, you know. I need to feed my family, whatever the case may be. And that's the crime. That's 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 the crime excuse which people have been using for five hundred years. Yeah. So, sorry, I, I, yeah, I had yeah. to go rob that bank because sort sorry. of like a lazy it's, excuse, you know. Excuse? Yeah, and I mean, I mean, look, look, being being an artist, being an independent artist in the music industry is not easy, you know, especially financially. Like you have to self-fund yourself, and yes, as you're moving along this process, you're going to get people that will say, "Okay, look, I'm going to support you with this." So, even, and if you're lucky enough to have parents who are going to support you or family, or whatever, you know, it's cool that they do. But like to the ones, to the artists out there who are complaining, okay, look, I understand that you just want to concentrate on your music, you want to get into the studio, and you want to do your thing, you want to lay down the legs on this beat, and you want to get it out there. Cool, no problem, we can do that. But if you're also financially battling, as we said, now it's the lazy way out to say, okay, no, I'm only going to depend on that. There's so many side hustles you can create around you. You know, I've done it for myself personally. You you create it around you so you can just concentrate on the music. But if I'm going to come out there and say, oh, no, I'm just going to sell the next deal that drops my table, even though I know I'm going to be selling my soul, knowing that, okay, there's a long route I can't take, then, you know, that's on me. Mm -hmm. So you, as you said, you know, it's crying, oh, no, this and that. That's why I'm taking the deal. There is other alternatives. Oh. You know, that's why, like, I eventually lazy on top of that because you can have 10 side hustles and still finance your music business. You can. Yeah. It's been or done before. A job. You can have a job and you can do yeah. the art at the same time and just keep yeah. doing that. And that's what, yeah, what pretty yeah, much yeah. every artist that I know. <laughs> I guess we've family. done both, you know. We've done both. Hmm. You see. But they, I mean, I also did both. I also had a job at one point, you know, COVID here. Before COVID, I was like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna do 50% of the job, 50% of my music. And then COVID hit, then I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna go back and work for someone. Let me just create a few side hustles just to finance, you know, just to get into this COVID period. And I mean, I don't know what I had to do. And look, it's brought us here today. So anything is possible. You know, Very true. anything is possible. Very true. Like if you could survive the last four years, you can survive anything. That's nah. me. <laughs> <laughs> we can only imagine what the next six are going to be like. But you know, hey, it's fine. That's fine. Exactly. Exactly. No, hundred percent, hundred percent. But uh, yeah, sure. Look, I mean. This has been really good. This is this was an exciting conversation. This was a really yeah. exciting conversation. It's great fun. Okay, good so yeah, just send me through all the links, you know, that you would love to for me to share, and I'll put that in the descriptions. And once it's uploaded, I'll share it. I'll send it to you. Will do, man. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, right. Sean. Okay, <laughs> enjoy your weekend. Right. Cool. Bye -bye.